everybody. You are watching Divorce Happy Hour. I'm your host, Christina Previtt, and joining me today is Michelle G., the love scientist. She is an online matchmaker and provides relationship coaching. Thanks for joining me today, Michelle. Thanks so much for having me, Christina. I appreciate it. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, uh, probably because I'm a divorce lawyer, and the one thing that I hear all the time is I'm never gonna find somebody again. So yes. what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let me start by saying that love is everyone's birthright. You know, it's not about, it, you know, it's really easy, especially with everything going on in the world to really think that doom and gloom, um, I'm never gonna find anyone. How am I gonna be able to see someone through a mask, online dating, like, the list is endless, but I'm here to tell you that really love is your birthright. And there is, and I'm a, I personally am a true believer that there is someone for everyone. And sometimes we're not shopping in the right places. And that's why we're not finding what we're looking for. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. I want to dig into that a little bit more. Um, but just so that you understand our clients and, and I want people who are watching to be able to relate to this that a lot of people, when they when I, they meet with me for a consultation and they're trying to decide if they even want to get a divorce, that's already something that's on their minds. You know, they, they, they really think that I'm never going to find someone again. I'm going to be alone forever. And I know that this is something you help people with. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about you and what it is that you really do for people to help them find love? Yeah, so... I never thought that I would end up being a matchmaker or relationship expert. After I tell you my background, it's kind of like, wait, how? And that's the question I get all the time. How did you go from this to this, right? Uh, so prior to becoming a matchmaker and a relationship expert, relationship expert. I served in the United States Marine Corps for 13 years. Um, and my focus was intelligence. So you can, to make it really simple and clear, I was a spy. Um, I worked on, yes, I was a spy. <laughs> That's cool. That's the best way that I can put it. Cause when I tell people oh, I did intelligence and reconnaissance and they're like, their eyes just glare. So I'm just like, you know what spy means? I was a spy, that's what I did. Um, it was a lot of really great and fun work. Um, I also worked on different levels in terms of like international diplomacy and a lot of international conflict. Um, and that was something that I really loved and I found a passion of being able to really work with people. My whole goal for joining the Marine Corps was that I wanted to be the first woman president, right? We all have these big goals as, as, as little children, right? And so we, we do our best to go after them. And then I met a boy and I fell in love. <laughs> it's kind of like my goals went out the window, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so as I was going through that process, I got married and my career was really, really skyrocketing. And, uh, but my marriage wasn't doing so well. And I found it so interesting that I was really able to have such a great career in being able to work with conflict and being able to bring leaders to the table and help them be able to see things from a different perspective, um, mostly men and have influence on the decisions that were being made. But then with my ex-husband, I wasn't able to even get the man to pick the socks off the floor. You know, it just two and two did not equal four at that time. Um, and I learned, I got married really young. I learned in that process after going through marital counseling therapy, before we went to see someone like yourself, a divorce lawyer, you know, we just we just knew that we were just two very different people. We wanted very different things. And we got married really young. You know, we were still evolving uh, when we got married. So it was one of those things where we just parted our ways, but it really broke my heart. I know it broke his. And um, I going through that process, I wanted to really help people be able to go through that process, heal and be able to find love again. So I started working initially with couples who were on the brink of divorce. I went back to school, got my degree in social psychology, got certified as a um, certified relationship specialist. I went and became a facilitator of the Gottman uh, Seven Principles of Making a Marriage Work. 
you know, on and on and on. I could just keep saying a bunch of things. Um, but the whole focus was being able to bring these couples together. And then as that was happening, online dating was booming. I ended up getting a lot of referrals for single people who were in the same boat where I was, where they're like, I got married young. It was my starter husband. I know oh. who I am now. <laughs> I'm looking for real love help me find this i don't understand this online dating thing i'm a person who loves to look into empirical data understand algorithms really understand that facet and as that happens um those referrals kept coming in and so my business continued to shift um and then i decided you know what people were like you must know some great people in your network you were a marine like you have to know some really great guys are some really great marine gals and i was like i do of course and I'm like introduce me and um i was like well let me i kind of stumbled into matchmaking looking for more relationship conferences and i stumbled into the matchmaking institute went there got certified as a matchmaker and then incorporated that into my business so it's really been an evolving journey over the last eight years of me from being a u.s marine being a spy being able to take those skills and i feel like Everything that we do on our path really does light the way for us to be able to reach our life purpose or reach our purpose. And again, it continues to evolve the more and more we get enthralled into it and involved in it. So that's really kind of how my journey started. And today I really focus on helping elite men and women. A lot of our clients are very high profile individuals who sometimes have not had so much luck with online dating and sometimes they have had luck with online dating but they just don't want to be able to deal with it they want to be able to meet be have someone curate introductions for them someone who is of a high caliber who is like-minded who travels in their circles um, and most importantly these individuals both men and women you know they want the discreetness of it so our services are really focused on offering that to them as well as a little bit of date coaching because let's be honest christina everyone has a little bit of blind spots and sometimes we just need a mirror to reflect those blind spots so we don't commit the same patterns and mistakes over and over absolutely i always tell my clients you know why don't you just take a little break let's not jump from one situation to another you know maybe half of them listen because like you said, you know, they meet a boy or they meet a girl and they fall in love and that's it. Right. But I tell people, you know, if you were in a really unhappy relationship that served something for you while you were mm -hmm. in it. And if you don't want to repeat those patterns, you have to really look at, you know, why was I with this person? Why did I pick them? Was it something unhealthy that made me pick them? So that you don't end up with basically the same person who has a different name. So how do you help people do that? Can you tell us, can you take us through your process? Like when you get a new client, you know, what do you do with them? Absolutely. So everything that we do, um, so it's, you know, we're a very boutique matchmaking dating service. So everything that we do with our clients, any technique, any tool, any advice is really science based. And the reason that I rely on science so heavily is because I am one of those people that it's like, if I can see it and I can test it and I can know the result, then I know that either it works or it doesn't work. And I have to be honest, right? One thing doesn't work for everyone. So our approach is really not a cookie cutter approach. Um, when we have a client, one of the things that we really wanna understand is both how they see themselves and how they see the world. Because that really, affects or really plays an influence into the person that we're going to select from them research tells us that there are seven key life values right and i didn't discover this but one of my mentors did um and based on 30 years of her research really we're able to to figure out that if out of three or four of those if people are not on the same page of those key life values meaning finance family, religion, um, future goals, right? Sexual compatibility, so forth and so forth. If they're not on the same page, then what ends up happening is that the relationship 
has a greater chance for it to not really work out in the end. And I know that a lot of people talk about communication, communication and communication, but there's one layer a lot deeper, which is understanding, right? We don't always have to agree. And conflict is not a bad thing. Even in the early stages of finding love, like if you have a disagreement with someone that you're dating and you don't see eye to eye, that's okay as long as you're willing to understand them. You're willing to really understand where they're coming from and you can respect their opinion. So our process is really getting to know the person. So then when we do introduce them to someone, we are introducing to someone that we know the likelihood of them being able to last in the long term is higher than just matching on, oh, this is the body type that you're looking for. Oh, this is the hobbies that you have, right? We, we like to go a lot deeper. Beauty is superficial, right? It's surface level and you know it doesn't last forever. And when you look at couples who've lasted 60, 70, 50 years, what they tell you is, what kept them together is that friendship that they were able to really build from the beginning. Yeah, I think that's important. I haven't been married for 50 years, so I can't say too much about that. <laughs> 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 when someone, so when someone meets you, do you, is it like a battery of tests? Is it like taking a, a written exam? Like, like if you go to the psychologist, and I forget what those exams are called, but is it kind of like that? <laughs> Um, I will say that there are some things like we do have all of our clients go through personality tests um, and we do that again and so we can understand how they see the world how they see themselves they're not long tests you're not gonna sit there and, and fill out the bubble sheet and be like oh I'm on question 59 yeah oh, I have 110 no they're really short questions but they're really pinpointed questions another thing that we do is we really want to get to understand like the the where their emotional heritage come from and i think a lot of a lot of people aren't familiar with that term is emotional heritage and when we talk about emotional heritage heritage you really got to think about how did you grow up and how did your parents and the people around you really look at emotions and look at relationships right and what did you pick up as a result and how are you then taking that and applying that to the relationships you're in? And that really gives us a perspective. Um, and I, I'll be honest with you, our methodology called Love Psychology has really allowed us to keep a 97% success rate because we're so thorough, because we wanna make sure that we make matches that are not gonna last for two or three months, but that they're gonna last for a lifetime. So how do you determine if you have someone who really wants a relationship because that's the thing that I hear about from my single girlfriends going on match and, and those sites is, you know, people aren't really just looking for a serious relationship They're you know, they're just looking for something that's going to be easy for right now. And then they move on. So how do you determine that? Yeah. So I would say something to, as an advice, cause I'm sure there's online daters here who are like, Oh my God, that's me. I've been online dating. And I can't seem to get these women to write me back. I can't seem to get these guys to move from the chat to the first date. And even now with, you know, social distancing and wearing masks, it almost seems harder and impossible. So what I'm here to tell you is that the rule of thumb of 24, of 24 to 48 hours, if it doesn't move over to a FaceTime, a Zoom or a phone call, that person potentially is probably not looking for something serious and they're probably just wanting to have a pen pal. So I would just very politely just say to them, listen, thanks so much. It was nice to kind of get to know you, but I kind of need a little bit more and it's okay to say that. I wish you the best, right? For us, when we're um, screening our clients, we ask very, our, our, our process, not that it's long, but our process is very detailed. And a person who's really ready to find love, they're like, okay, give me whatever you want. I'm here. Like, I want to manifest this person that I'm looking for. So they're really happy and open to go through the process. Yes, I went, I did the personality test. Yes, I took the intake form. And when I talk to them, that's one of my first questions to them is like, what are you looking to achieve? Are you wanting a long-term relationship? 
Are you wanting to just get, you know, get married? Or are you really stepping into the dating pool because you came from a divorce and it's been some time? And let's be honest, things have changed from what you remember it. And based on those questions and how they answer that, it really allows me to determine one of two things. Are they a matchmaking candidate or are they maybe more a candidate for date coaching, right? which is another service that we offer? Some people um, may not be ready for matchmaking. They're just dipping their toe in there. I wouldn't recommend investing in a matchmaking service. That's more where you might need some date coaching strategy, right? It's kind of like we hire a personal fitness person, uh, a trainer to be able to get into shape where you hire a love coach or a date coach to help get your dating life in shape. And that's where I come in. Yeah. And you know, can we just be real? We're all grown ups here. There's people that are just really just looking for sex. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. they are. Um, so, and, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you want something casual and, and you know, you're looking to find someone that you're sexually compatible with, but you're, you don't want all the responsibility of thinking about marriage and things like that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you actually have clients like that or do they t tend to not, you know, hire a mad worker? Um, <laughs> you know, I think I find that people who are looking for that tend to go more for an escort esque type of service, you know, and, and they'll, ask, like, they'll be like, Hey, uh, I just want to meet pretty girls. I just want to meet really fine guys, really attractive men and just set me up on dates every week. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm not the right person for you. Um, and I politely will decline. And I think another item is to, we're not a matchmaking service is not a very cheap service. We are a, um, costly service because of the time and the resources and also what we dedicate to each and every client. So I think our price point also does kind of set that wall to filter out people who are just looking for, I want to swipe and I want to go on a date tomorrow and yeah. I want to swipe. And I'm just like, I'm not Tinder. <laughs> yeah, people do that on, the on match or Tinder, you know, Bumble is the one I think everyone's using now. Yes, they're always changing, you know. <laughs> well, another thing that I hear a lot is people are nervous about being out there, having to actually go on dates again, because if it's something you haven't done in years, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it can be a little intimidating. So you <laughs> said that you have coaching for that. Yeah, so absolutely. Um. So I'm curious to know, like when they say that they're nervous, what is the thing that they say they're the most nervous about? Because usually we hear a couple of things, but I'm curious to see if we hear the same thing. Well, there was one gentleman that I'm thinking of in particular who was a little bit older. Um, I think he was in his late 50s, maybe early 60s. And he said, I just felt like I was a dork. Like I didn't know how to dress. You know, I, I didn't feel like I was physically presenting myself in the best way mm -hmm. and you know like what's what are the standards you know who pays and you know am I supposed to pick her up and take her out and like what are the rules you know <laughs> that gentleman in particular yeah and that's the, those are exactly what I hear like who pays who makes the first phone call or more, I've also heard this one. Um, dressing is kind of different. I think it's it's dependent on each person or each character is kind of, you know, each person is different, but definitely who pays, who calls first? Um, do I pick her up? Do I meet him at the spot? Uh, do I let him come to my house? And, and those are definitely valid questions. And I think the rules, here's the deal. I'm just going to say guidelines. Rules are so hard and fast. It's like, don't do this, don't do that. And there's always this kind of this, this tension behind it. So I'd rather say like these dating guidelines. And my first thing is it has to be comfortable for you. Whatever is comfortable for you. Meaning if you're a person who you're just dipping your, you're dipping your toes into the sand and you're wanting to meet someone and you don't feel comfortable being picked up or, you, or the lady doesn't feel comfortable being picked up, 
it's okay. It, it doesn't mean anything. And she's more comfortable with meeting you somewhere. Respect that. Because again, there's a lot of people who unfortunately have taken a vehicle like online dating and have scammed people or portrayed something that they're not right. And that happens both to men and women. So I would say that it's more of a guidelines thing. What feels comfortable? Always ask if you're not certain, always ask. I'm still a traditional gal and I still tell all my clients, all my male clients, I say to them, listen, you're a gentleman, right? And they say, yes. I'm like, never go empty handed. Even if it's a sunflower, even if it's a carnation, even if it's a white and yellow rose, right? Like never go empty handed. I'm so big on courting and I feel like with online dating culture, it's really, really fallen by the wayside. I agree. Um, I agree. Yeah. And I think it's partly because it's like now you can send virtual gifts or you can swipe or you can do this. Right. And so it's gotten kind of very lazy. And um, so I always tell all my gentlemen, never go empty handed, even if it's a card. Right. Like, thanks for meeting me. It's the gesture means so much more. And here's the thing for the gentleman who was asking you, like, how do I dress and things like that? A woman can actually overlook that if you show up with something that's like, oh my God, he made that gesture. You know what I mean? Like uh, women are willing to see that because they're like, okay, there's more there and this can be fixed. You just hire a stylist yeah. and it's over with, right? Yeah. We can dress them. We can dress them. Of course, we're right. kind of because we're two women having this conversation. I'm curious what men would, um, would, would have to say about it. Um, so are there, is there an age range that you typically work with? So, um, interestingly enough, my youngest clients have been in their late twenties. So 28, my oldest client, and this was because I was doing some teaching at senior centers, believe it or not, the senior population, they, a lot of widowers. Um, so they brought me in to teach at a senior center. My oldest client that I match made was 90 years old. He was such a sweet, sweet gentleman. Oh my God. He's so sweet. And he lost his wife, unfortunately, to Alzheimer's. Um, she had Alzheimer's, but other, some other complications as well. And he, I went to give a class about online dating and how seniors need to be careful and, and what precautions to take. So I don't typically always work with seniors, but my oldest clients has been 90 years old. And I'll be honest, I don't really discriminate. Most of my clients, if, if you were to ask my sweet spot, most of my clients are anywhere between their 30s, like early 30s, all the way down to like, all the way up to 61, 62. But again, I've had a 90 year old client. I was able to match him and he was a sweetheart. And I, I think it's just so sweet. You know, they just come yeah. from a very different generation. It's yes. so sweet. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> I think you always grow up with a rose or a flower. Yes, yes. And they, they always end up paying for the bill or saying, no, I got it, you know, which is OK. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely a lot of generational differences. I feel like we could I could go on about that for hours because I have a lot of single girlfriends are always complaining that the, the constant texting, you know, somebody mm -hmm. will connect with somebody on one of these um, these websites and they'll just text forever and they'll, they'll just, you know, they'll disappear for a few days and then they'll just get some random text that says, hey, <laughs> and nothing else. And they're just like, what are we doing here? You know, <laughs> like, what, is this person going to actually ask me out on a date? <laughs> um, any special insight that I'm sure there are ladies who would love to hear you know hey so <laughs> I'm going to tell you that part of our service um, and our executive matchmaking package we do help men particularly with their online dating profiles women have a better grasp at it um, and we help them with writing their profile and we help them also with approaching what's the best message to send, right? And you're absolutely right. Guys are like, when I talk to them, they're like, oh, I just want to say, hey, like, it's kind of like my poke at like, do you want to talk to me or not? You know? And I'm like, yes, that works when you're in middle school and you're on the playground and you're like, hey, and then you're looking at them. I'm like, virtually it doesn't work because exactly that a woman doesn't know what to do with it. Here's what I would say. 
give them a chance. Some of them just are have no clue, um, to be honest. And secondly, sometimes they're just really shy. And like anyone else, men fear rejection the same way that us as women do. So when you get that hey message, you know, the best thing you can do is say, hey, how are you? We are prone to answer a question, right? If he yeah. answers a question and he's like, I'm doing great, I'm doing fine, and he doesn't ask you a question, that can sometimes be an indicator that maybe he's not a great conversationalist. And if you're looking for someone to be an engaging conversationalist, that may not be the right person for you. For some women, they're like, they like to overtake the conversation. They're like, okay, so tell me this. They're more um, gregarious and they're okay with that. Continue to pursue a girlfriend if it works for you. But yeah. if it doesn't, hey, you know, they're just, maybe they're just shy. It could be a lot of different things, you know? And remember also, never think that you're the only person that they're talking to. Because they're typically on online dating, they're talking to three, four, five, I've even heard of 10 and I'm just like, ah, yeah. just, just stop now. <laughs> it was too much out there. You know, I always say that I feel like when people talk about this online dating, I mean, I've been in a relationship for a while, but I did online dating, you know, way back. And it was like shopping for a pair of shoes. Yes. I mean, like the swiping, it's kind of ridiculous that you're trying to find a mate that way. Right? Like, oh, I don't like his earlobes. <laughs> I'm going to pass that one by. I don't like his uh, sideburns. I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, I, I will say that I feel that online dating has really, and I, one of the things too, and I'm going to, I'm going to start by saying this. Um, there is a thing called as a thing that people talk about and science refers to it as dating fatigue. And that is because one thing that we also have to recognize is what do we do on social media, on social networking sites? We're swiping up, we're looking through photos, we're liking, we're hearting, right? And so then guess what? You're doing that when you're trying to interact with your friends and see what they're up to. And then you have that same behavior that gets ingrained into your body. And as you're doing that, you're just, by the time you get to online dating, it's not the same thing because you don't know these people. And so you become fatigued by it. And then especially if you don't get the response or anything like that, then it's kind of like, oh, I'm gonna give up on this. This doesn't work for me. The number one thing I will say is I, it's really important to know what it is that we're looking for. And you, I think you put it so perfectly, right? It's kind of like shopping. Would you go and get a pair of Steve Madden shoes at Payless? Probably not, right? Yeah. Same thing with online dating. If you're looking for a really good quality guy, if you notice that he's not on Tinder or not on Bumble, there are more than 1,500 online dating sites out there. Maybe you're a person who's more into yoga. Maybe you're a person who loves the luxury type of lifestyle. There's websites like on Luxie. There's websites like Raya that are for more high profile people. Um, there's also websites, you know, Meet Mindful for people who are more on that spiritual path. It's just a matter of knowing what you're looking for and where to go to find it. Yeah, so keep looking. Don't give up. That's right. Love is your birthright. <laughs> right, I love that. So, okay, so let's say someone uh, gets on board with you. They take their battery of tests. <laughs> and then what? How do you set, do you set them up with people? You arrange dates? How does it work? Yeah, so once we get to know the person, they go through the profiling call, they go through through the, as I like to say, the onboarding process, right? We have a process of we hire a recruiter. We're with working with a recruiter hand on hand in terms of what it is that they're looking for. We have a database of single women and single men. And so in this database, that's where I go to first and foremost. I'll pull some people and everyone that we think we may be a good fit for our client, we'll contact them and set up a virtual interview. Before COVID, it would be an in-person interview, but because of COVID, you know, we want to practice social distancing and safety. So 
we do these virtual interviews. And our whole process is really being able to ask the questions that are important to our clients. You know, some clients really want to know, uh, for example, I have a client right now who travels a lot. Unfortunately, because of COVID, his home base is really in one of the Carolinas. So he wants to find someone who is open to dating him, but will be okay with the home base being in the Carolinas, right? He has homes in New York and Miami and California and, you know, other places. And that's all great and dandy. But again, because of the situation, he's looking for something really specifically. So I go through this process with my team of being able to ask those important questions to our clients. Everyone who we end up introducing to our clients, they are required to go through a background check because of the individuals that we work with. Um, I've worked with politicians, VPs, um, VPs of bank, I mean, tech investors, like very high profile individuals. And so because of that, you know, they're people who want to make sure that they're not just getting introduced to someone who, who is looking for or has an ulterior motive. And for yeah. that reason, and everyone that, that we talk to, they're open to doing that. Um, and then we set up the date. All of our first dates before COVID were always experienced dates. And one of the reasons is because if you just sit across from one another, it's really easy to have that awkward moment where you're just looking at each other and sipping the drink, <laughs> right? And you're just like, so, and then yeah. you do the small talk. <laughs> a job interview. Right, right. So our philosophy is let's take that off the table and let's do something experimental. Um, you know, we did a client that like sometimes both clients are really into bourbon or into a certain type of, of whiskey, right? So we'll, we'll arrange like a mixology class. Other clients are very active. So we used to arrange like maybe like a hiking or a personalized like um, rock climbing, like depending where they are. I have clients all over. Um, now with COVID, our first step is to do a Zoom date. We set that up for them. And then we, as if they want to do a second date, then we'll set up a proper social distancing date. You know, picnics are great ideas, walking in a park, um, being able even to go out to a, a movie theater that are, that's like a open drive-in theater is a great idea. And I know a lot of people don't like theaters because you can't talk, but that's why I arrange it as the second date. You've already had that one-on-one -on -one interaction, even though it's virtually. Yeah. Yeah. So how have things um, changed because of COVID? I mean, obviously the personal contact I can't have, but have you found it to be more difficult or do you find you're getting a lot more demand? <laughs> Um, so I can speak only on my experience. We've actually had some really great success in matching during COVID, believe it or not. Um, I've shared this with a couple of my colleagues and they're like, some of the, some people are not open to virtual dates, right? Unfortunately, it's the new normal. Um, and we want to make sure that we're respectful, regardless of how people feel about it. We want to be respectful. We want to make sure that we're practicing the social distancing and the mask wearing. And what I have found with my clients is that they've actually been able to take a step back and really have deeper, more connecting questions with their dates, which has led to more, you know what? I want to get to know this person a little bit longer. Um, there was actually a client of mine at, who, I actually matched right at the end of February. She and uh, this gentleman that I matched her with, they ended up meeting up and, you know, she's like, oh my God, he was fantastic. And he's like, oh my God, she's great. And I just spoke to a matter of fact, I believe today they're flying out to meet up with each other. Um, oh. You know what I mean? Like, and they've just been dating and doing kind of this long distance and attempting to meet each other when they can. And it, it hasn't been difficult because I feel that people are, are in a position and with the quarantine and everything that's going on with the new normal, they're more comfortable being more vulnerable. This is a yeah. time where vulnerability is okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it must be interesting to have the Zoom dates. I guess it takes out all of that um, 
stress and excitement of, you know, when's the first kiss going to happen? Right. So is, is there going to be a kiss on this date? I guess there can't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will say something though. Um, there has been a high increase in sexting, you know, <laughs> there has been a, a definite rise in sexting for sure. Um, I will say Wait, talk to you about that. Of course, of course. I've had clients who, you know, they're they're not, you know, some clients they're not willing to do the social distancing date, but they keep talking to this client and they're like, I have needs. I want to kiss this person. I want to be in front of this person. And this person is not ready for it. Should I move on or should I stick around? And I always say, I'm like, look, that's a personal decision. If 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 the person is the right fit for you and you think they're worth it, then it's your call. You know, at that point, it's like, I can't make that decision for you. And then some people are like, you know, we got a little bit, it, things got a little bit hot and bothered, right? And I'm just like, I'm like, look, I don't judge. I don't judge. But here's what I will say. Please make sure that you think about when you're all hot and bothered, it's really easy these days to hit record. It's really yeah. easy to put yourself in a situation where, you know, if things don't work out, person. exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Um, and so I'm I always, I'm dating. Dating. right. <laughs> I'm like, just keep that in mind, you know, just, you know, don't don't let your hormones do all the talking. You know, save yeah. that for when you guys can't see each other. Yeah, <laughs> it's always better when you see each other, anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I may. I feel like I'm, you know, missing out, not being uh being uh spoken for. <laughs> but, but I don't know. Maybe you know, dating isn't easy. So finding somebody is sometimes can can feel like a daunting task. Yeah. You know, um, I'm married. I'm happily remarried. Uh, so I've been married to my current husband. We've been together since 2013. I always have to do the math. So it's it'll be seven years this, this October. And um, what's really interesting is that he says the same thing. He's like, you know, I, he has single friends. I have some single girlfriends. And he's like, God, I'm so happy I'm not single because it's so hard. It just seems like it's this endless merry-go-round. And yeah. what I say to, what I say to him, and I say it to my friends too, and I say to clients who say that to me, I said, you know what, dating has always been this hard. The difference is that now we have technology that really brings it to our awareness of all these options we had. But if you really think about it, the options were still there. You just didn't have technology who brought yeah. it forth. You know? Yeah, it's so, hard. In, yeah. It's hard in a different way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't really miss being single, and I, I don't even want to be a buzzkill for the people that are watching who are like thanks christina you know we're still looking for somebody but um i when i was single i had fun with it and then um and then you know i found somebody good that i could settle down with so it it'll happen when it's supposed to happen and i really appreciate all your insights i think obviously you know what you're talking about Thank so you. if people want to work with you how can they do that how should they reach out to you Definitely. Um, I'm, I'm an old school kind of gal. You know, you can always pick up the phone and call me. I have a website. My website is michellegcom with two L's. So you can visit michellegcom and you can fill out a contact form, look up our services. But I always prefer the good old phone. It never has failed me. Um, I love hearing people's voice because I feel like you can really form a good connection. So please reach out and give me a call. Our phone number is 1-877-628-8723. And uh, if I don't pick up the phone, it'll be Stacy or one of the other gals on our team. And they're fantastic. And, you know, we'll set something up to chat with you virtually. And this information is all on your website, right? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And you're also on Instagram. Yes, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Pinterest, I'm on YouTube. And my social media handle is all the same. It's at Love by Michelle G. Okay, awesome. Well, I've been checking it out. I'm living vicariously through you and all your clients. So, <laughs> so check it out, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thanks for watching Divorce Happy Hour. See ya. Thanks for having me, Christina. Of course. Maybe we could have you on another time to talk about your life as a spy. <laughs>
I get that one. That'd be interesting. I'd love to share. That would be a good one. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>